Polar number three. D major, octaves, dynamic balance in your left hand. Balance changing during slurs. Very loose. Left shoulder. Yeah, make sure that that's, you know, all fine. This is probably a good time to check that your shoulder rest is adjusted well so that you have really superb posture because without freedom in your left arm, this is going to be a bust. It's not going to work for you. Make sure that your music stand is at the end of your scroll because if you are peering this way, your violin's going to do this. When your violin does this, your arm can't go anywhere. This is going to be crap or really uncomfortable or really badly out of tune. Oh yeah, crap. I don't like pain, so it's good to set up really well. But make sure you're very square. You've got a loose thumb that you can swing easily and that the tip of your thumb is in contact with the, is in contact with the neck not this okay if you've got any type of clawing your double stops are going to hurt and you're going to have a lot of extra tension in the back of your hand whenever we play double stops i think the temptation is to kind of claw and to really press until you get those deep grooves in your fingers and the wrist starts to go and all of that is just tension we don't need so good to check in with your knees and feet Spines long, core strong, and then this can just be relaxed and floppy. Uh, there's nothing too horrendous in here. There's probably a couple of dodgy uh, tones and semitones moving around, and it's probably worth highlighting your resonant notes so that your brain understands which thing it should hear ringing at which time. If you're finding that a little difficult, you need a pencil and an eraser because you're gonna make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. Deal with it, move on. Pencil your fingers in, mark yourself semitones between the fingers so that if you've got like a ringing D on the A string with your third finger and an F sharp on D string with your second finger, mark in the semitone there. Mark in the tone if you've got a ringing D and an F natural because that's difficult to play and you sometimes need forewarning. I think that's all about, that's like my total advice for this. It's in D major so it should be happy and although there's no dynamic indication, I think it's good to try and play these musically. So once you have the left hand working competently and the right hand understanding the string crossings, try and think about what D major means in terms of narrative, which notes are more important, which notes are a little more obscure in the scale, which notes are leading, which notes are a destination, which notes would be a new beginning, because otherwise these are very boring. If you play them thinking about your key signature, they can be really beautiful. So let's start. I'm going to suggest that we play the first phrase. I will stop at the end of the first phrase and we'll assess how we're feeling. One, two, oh, I'm going to leave the slows out. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. The elbow really has to swing through to set the left hand up for that fourth finger to drop on. Please make sure that the arm is in position and the finger drops on, not the finger reaching for the note. Ready, and. If you're not happy yet, stop and repeat that. If you're happy, let's go on. Move the two back. Fifth. phrases in there I got excited mm. let's go again from the beginning I don't think it's too awful uh, if you want to stop and write any fingers in just press pause I'll never know ready play <laughs> Se 
Let me try. Reach. Pull back. about how this should sound it's okay just to play the top line or the bottom line totally fine don't be afraid to okay even play along with me playing this but just pick the top line or the bottom line and it will help you work out where your fingers are walking whether they're walking on the top or the bottom and where you're meant to have resonant notes that you balance your pitch against because this is all about relative pitch like i said in the first study video and if you need to go back and work through that again do there's nothing wrong with it you can do it as many times as you want um, you might even want to go through and just spend the first five minutes of that video play it through with me and then oh yeah i know all the things i know all about relative pitch i can tune my intervals come and play three again if if one of these early studies isn't working so well, it will show up later on because they're built in much, in much the same way as Suzuki Book One. There's a new technique being introduced in every study. So if you haven't mastered number five, don't go on to number six. If you've got horrible stuff happening in two, it's going to show up in three. If you're hanging on with your thumb when you play one, three is gonna be a disaster. Okay, so really work on one, fluent two, fluent three here we go and build on your skills don't try and play them all at once it's ca catastrophic okay having said all that i'm looking through this and i can see oh some more fifths coming up so we have to think about that finger posture we want it dropping perpendicular onto the string and aiming for the middle ground between the strings just like we were in two so if they work in two they should be fine in three if they suck in two go back and fix them uh, let's play from, so it's the end, the last bar of the third line. Okay, third line, one, two, three, last bar. Third finger on A, fourth finger on E, they're a solid tone apart, and we're listening to the resonant D, and balancing the B against the D. Explicitly rings, more subtle ring because of perfect fourths. Ready, play. Fifth. Move the two back. Fifth again. Move it back. Dynamic balance, pivot on the second finger. Fifth. in those last three lines uh, especially when we hit oh, the second last line last bar of the second last line uh, I lost it so I've got my first finger sitting just on the A string it stays there now I have to kind of edge it across and grab both strings. Then the first finger goes across and gets off. So just a little really like discreet work, I think, where your finger's just edging across the strings and you want to be very sure about what they're doing. I'm going to play from the beginning to the end. I'm going to keep the slurs out of it because I'm focusing on my left hand's integrity the bow just floats back and forth. It really doesn't have a lot of crossing to do. If you don't believe me, 
highlight your levels two, four, six. You should know about those already from number one. If you don't, go back, do that again. Uh, the bow's not doing a lot. The bow's floating back and forth, just letting the resonance happen. If you try and press to get a bigger tone or a bigger sound, or because you're trying really hard, it will just sound forced and it will force your intervals out of tune because the bow's too heavy. So let the bow and drop the fingers. Remember the arm steers the fingers into position and then they fall onto the strings. One, two, three, four. distracted. Okay, put your bowling in. Slurs time. One, two, three, four. 